instant clash possibly. So uh, they are extremely strong, and for me, it's basically a question: How does it look around their combat picks? Because if Trick did the homework, they're most likely going to try and ban out Tracer against them. Maybe pick Tracer for themselves, and Method is very likely going to rely on things they've shown already, and that stuff is scary in itself. So, a Tracer ban could be good here. Because as an update for you guys at home, Junkrat is actually globally banned this weekend. And Junkrat was something that we saw a lot from Method. She went to be picked him up in the last couple of weeks. So a couple of big heroes that Method is willing to play and Tupi is willing to show off with could be taken away from them. Regardless, Trick Esports stays with their favorite ban of the year, uh, Abathur. Banned out once again. Yeah, they just always ban Abathur. They hate that, 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 They has exactly. They really hate it. And yeah, Junkrat has been played by Method twice, so we saw them with one win and one loss. Interestingly enough, Trick hasn't played Junkrat once, mm -hmm. so they didn't really rely on the hero, so I think for the match here it doesn't have too much of an impact. But yeah, let's see what the ban for Method is. Currently they're looking at a potential ban on Uther, and the heroes to watch out for again are mostly Tracer and of course Blaze again. Since at the start it was only Trick that picked Blaze, Alex was homing in on the hero, and now everybody is on the Blaze train especially on this map. And Blaze even banned out. At this point, I'm just saying, all right, you're going to go and first pick him most likely, so let's make sure that you don't have access to him. The train comes to a halt. Tricked, will you take the Tracer? Bakke has yep. dabbled in Tracer a little bit here. Uh, one that he seems to fit naturally with. He was very good on Genji and one that we always called out for in 2017. We got a couple Genji games this year, but he's been dabbling more on that Tracer, and he does well on her. Well, the problem for Trick is that they actually, this year at least, have not really been successful with Tracer. They have two losses. Marke last year had some really cool games with Tracer, but so far in 18, not their best hero. Then you look at Method, and they are sitting at a Tracer record of five wins and three losses. And most of those three losses were actually in the first two play days. So since then, they have a stellar record with Tracer and look extremely strong. And that's mainly because Shrimpy has been popping off left and right. And since he also has a huge influence on the drafting, it's, main, it's basically their main drafter, as we could hear from Ethereal already earlier. It's very likely that he again jumps on a Comfort Hero if he can get access to it. He has been playing a different amount of heroes. Speaking of the Tracer, there she is. Also to note, you may see that Kerrigan again in this series. We've gotten it twice now from him, I believe. Uh, so Tracer and Malfurion opening up for Method. Tracer... And Malfury in the combo. That is quite deadly. Gets the heals going in. Trick Esports answered back with that Genji coming in for Make. But will they decide to pick up a healer here? Do they grab Uther? Kerrigan, as you said, just checking out for you, was bad, was taken twice by them. And they are the only ones in Europe that have played Kerrigan so far. And uh, both of those Kerrigan games were indeed successful. So currently 100% win ratio on Kerrigan uh, played by him. But Genji played again. Coming to a bit of a better win ratio here today earlier, but just in general, still not really on the level where you would say, okay, Genji is a huge threat. Now, keep in mind that in the previous series where we've seen Dignitas go up against Zealots, Zealots actually won uh, twice against Genji. So Genji in the previous series has been played in every single one of the four games and uh, lost two of those and won two of them. Lee Ming instead. So leaving the support up for later pickings, getting the poke on the Immortal phase. Is there any worry, though, that you don't get the support that you want? Full reset again. Yeah. I think there are enough supports around that you can take. You uh, can get access to Uther, you can still play around with Lucio and if you want to. you got already for shields. Rhaegar as well, exactly. You have the Tyrael shields. So I don't think that supports are going to be too much of a concern right now. I really don't think that there's a lot... In the past, we've talked about warrior chokes, about support chokes. I don't believe that those exist anymore. Too, too many options. Yeah, there's too many options around. I think the most limited that you are is probably around supports at this point. And even with the supports, to build up an actual support choke, you would have to start banning out supports on the first ban and then really put your opponent into a weird position because we still have too many supports that are absolutely viable. New meta next week. Rhaegar banned out. First pick, Uther Malfurion. Yeah, but that's a good point, Uther Malfurion. Double supports. Mm -hmm. As we had double support, supports choke were more of a thing. But now we're having mostly solo supports. Yeah. And uh, so you don't take as many supports for your own side anymore. And that really limits your option of putting your opponent in an awkward spot. You can still try and target a support that you feel fits better into your opponent's composition, but that's basically true for yeah. any other role as well. You hinder them, but you don't break them. Yeah. Greyman gets banned out. 
our first Grammy man of the day. We yeah. didn't get to see him be played yet. Method, considering what they want to move into. I mean, the Grammy band makes sense. You get Tracer to move in, get a pulse button. Grammy can clean it up too. A little bit de deadly as well. He's also good at softening people up. Remember, his cocktail build is kind of a place to do his base kit now. Greymane, through the last series, since the rework, has actually started to fall off significantly. In the previous series, he was not banned or picked once. And before that, Greymane was sitting at a 96% involvement rate. So that has already dropped significantly. This is the first time that we are seeing Greymane today, and it is as a ban on the second rotation. So really noteworthy that, at least for now, the teams that have played basically say, oh, I'm not so sure about Greymane after the rework. Arthas and Rhaegar, final pickups here for Trick Esports. Very true to what they were on this battleground, controlling the front line, Arthas controlling chokes, Lee Ming sieging away, and Genji waiting for the opportunity for something to develop, whether it's set up by his team or a mistake from his opponents. Mm -hmm. Trick has a comp that they are very comfortable with. Yeah, and it's again the Tracer factor here. Of course, with Tyrion and his shields, that can work well against Tracer. Then you have Arthas who can slow her down too. You have the Mortal Coil that or Death Coil that he can also utilize against her. So there's already tools that Tricked has to shut down Tracer. I mean, they're very well aware of how much Method and Trimby currently use Tracer to be successful in HGC. So those are heroes that they feel are adequate to deal with Tracer. But Mether needs a bit more damage, of course. They already have a new Burak, they have the Haka, and now the question just remains who's going to be the damage dealer on the last slot that really helps them out in this position. Yeah, we're looking for a hero for Nick. Are we going to get a mage? Is that possible here? No, it's going to be Tychus coming in. It's about damn okay. Tychus up against Arthas. Still a little worrisome if he gets jumped on, like we saw Mopsio earlier as he took out Poik. Method has, by the way, only played a single game on Battlefield of Eternity, and they lost that. And that was a very similar composition to what they are running right now. So they choose a map which they themselves have not, first of all, not chosen before, and also where they weren't uh, successful before. So they just want to brawl here at the start, but it's for a um, first pick, it's actually an interesting choice to make, considering that they're going up against an opponent where Tricked has five maps on Battlefield of Eternity. They picked the map twice. They've lost three of those games, so uh, they don't have a positive win rate here, but they play the map a lot, and yeah. oftentimes it's also their own pick. So I'm quite not really sure what exactly to make out of it that it is the choice of, of Method right now. It's good to always take your opponents to a map where they might feel comfortable if you feel like you're the stronger team and see how it develops and go from there. Regardless, we will have the Tracer factor coming in for Schwimpy, as he'll be playing Tracer in this matchup, and that has been something that has really earned a lot of wins for method. Will Trick Esport be able to control that tracer? That is the real question and the one that we'll have to watch unfold as we get ready for game number one and move into Battlefield of Eternity and it's best of five series. I'm excited here, Galador. Let's do it. Yeah, game one, Battlefield of Eternity, and we're gonna head straight in and see if Trick can make it happen and get closer to the Western Clash or if Method is gonna shut them down. On the left side, in the blue, it's the pause button. Coming in quickly here as we figure out what level one talents we want to pick up and jump back into the match. Yeah, pause button is the absolute most important button here. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's a couple of lag F situations that you can certainly have at times or three, two, three, but in this case, it's none of those, I would assume. So we're going to go ahead and wait here as we get set up and move on in. I don't know why, but I wanted to tell you a little bit of a joke, a little bit of a, a little bit of an anecdote. All right, um, wait. So wait, wait. <laughs> you ready for this? Okay. Well, I'm not trying to make you laugh. Like, don't get too excited. Like. My grandma once, she was downloading a video game. Uh, it's a card game. It's a card game. It's a little nice little matching game where you match the cards, you flip them over, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is it called RNG Stone? No, it's not called RNG Stone, but that's okay. a good game too. Uh, when she went to go play it, it wouldn't allow for her to play. She had to press the any key button. And my grandma <laughs> spent an hour and a half trying to find the any key button. <laughs> <laughs> so she can play her card game. And I have no idea why that pause button totally reminded me of that. She called me up my cell phone in a panic. I had like 20 okay. missed calls. It took her one and a half she hours to call you. She said that an hour and a half because she downloaded it. Obviously, no, no, it like, took some time. But yeah. I can. Uh, un okay, first of all, I would have slammed that keyboard at some point. Yeah, and yeah, that exactly. would have solved the problem. But yeah. it took her an hour and a half to call you? Yeah. 
I don't know what she did in that hour and a half. Maybe she got a I Coke. I don't know about you guys. I don't think she likes you. She's from the older generation. It might be just, you know, a little bit of patience coming in. You know, they, they waited longer if before freaking out. my grandmother has a tech problem, she calls me within five minutes. I don't know why you got to make this turn into an insult. That was a funny story <laughs> that Calador decided to go for the throw with. On the left side, in the blue, a thorough playing in Nubrak, Arcaner playing Dahaka, Kirsten playing Malfurion, Nick on Tychus, and Schwimpy plays Tracer. It's an insult. I'm just trying to give you an incentive to be a bit nicer <laughs> to your grandmother, my friend. To the right side, Crosby on Li Ming, Alex the Pro G on Arthurs. We have Mark on Genji, Rema on Tyrael, and uh, Gran Paquete on Rega. All right, so let's watch and see how this unfolds. Method puts it able to maybe a little bit of a fight in the middle lane, but no one shows up as Rift Esports puts four in the bottom, and Method respawned right away. And usually you'll have this four on four for a bit if no picks happen. Nothing too crazy going to occur. So Schwimpy again on Tracer, and Trick seemed very confident. They, of course, watched the games and prepared for what was happening in the past few weeks on Method's side, and now Schwimpy has to prove once again that he can deliver on Tracer. And his Tracer play, ever since Fnatic versus KSV back then MVP Black at BlizzCon 2016, it's just amazing what he can do with Tracer and at this point everybody knows that he wants the hero and they're still willing to head it over once more we have an attempted kill and this time it is actually Maka who's in trouble good drag and stun very well played on Method's side but he is still able to move out so great job on Genji I can't believe that didn't net a kill there material shields being just enough to keep Maka alive as well as Grandpa Kit bringing in the healing Maka just barely getting hit by a tongue almost costing him his life we've been talking about also Tracer and I think you highlighted it but Mako on Genji, it's usually not a hero that he gets. Yep. So uh, we have seen him only a few times on Genji uh, this season for exactly that very reason. So now he has another opportunity to show off here, yeah? and we might see that battle between Tracer and Genji. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things to ask Mako last year, uh, was why are you still strong on that Genji? And he's like, hey, I just have usually a good front line set up, and my team believes in me. And when I have that and I feel empowered, I feel unstoppable. And it's really cool to hear that from someone that's Kind of new last year coming into the HCC, Alex Pro G scattered him out and got him in the roster, and he's starting to become a, his own here. He's getting pretty yeah. good on Falstad. We saw him play a little bit of Tracer the last couple of weeks, starting to get his hero pool diversified a little bit. Yeah, Mako also a really good friend of Shrimpy, so there's like two friends going up against each other. I still remember how when Mako was not even a big part of Heroes of the Storm in general, we were at one of the events in, I think it was 2016, in uh, Sweden, and then Schwimpy at one of the uh, uh, one of the internet cafes was all of a sudden playing with friends. So like, oh yeah, it's just a, a friend that I know, real life friend of mine. And I play sometimes Hero League with him, and now we have Maki in the league as well. So it's just pretty impressive to see that Schwimpy bring a couple of friends in, and all of a sudden they turn out to be heroes pros too. I'm happy with him, dude. I like seeing Maki in the scene. He's just one of those guys that I enjoy talking to. Every time we do an interview yeah. with him, he's just so cheerful, he's so happy, always looking forward to the future. So with that being said, Immortals will be spawning soon. We got Merc Camp push heaven already. Trick gonna be looking to pressure that top side. Also the map slightly here. The method already set up to put a potential gank on that Genji or move in for an Immortal. Ellie Ming, Crosby going into Force Armor and Charge Blast on his one and four. So at this point, completely committed. Already going straight into the magic missiles. We still have the Immortal on the ground. Nice route against Trick. Method with these positioning around their own immortal, trying to be on the defensive here for now, as the Haka is still dealing with the top side. The Haka, we're gonna do what the Haka does best, float around there and wait for an opportunity yeah. to present itself. Trick can poke here though, as they have that Li Ming. They're content here with poking. Li Ming, very good at sieging down the immortal, but also threatening the opposing team with some decent damage there without a warp coming in. It definitely bought them a bit of time that they were able to take their own camp, whereas Method didn't commit to there, so now they are able to. Just use that time as we have the Haka still on the defense and Arthas has started to push in the wall at the top while we are still seeing the poke around Li Ming here and she's just firing away trying to get the Immortal down as much as she can. Grandpa Kette and Maka just waiting for the Haka to make a move. Yep, and she's even moving into the Magic Missile build here, just going straight into it. Charge Blast at level 4, helping out with the additional damage there. A few basic attack at targets been hit by the Q. Helps proc some damage. And speaking of damage, Crosby gets a little bit here on Nick in the Immortal phase, slowly going into the favor of Tricky Sport. Yeah, Shumpi needs to be really careful here. There's a lot of pressure on him when he starts to move forward. He always needs to make sure that he still has opportunities to dash back out and doesn't lose out on the mobility. Here comes the aggression on the other hand, and that's a perfect situation now to wow. get the kill against Tyrael. Very well done by Method, collapsing on the Tyrael, and Alex just didn't see that one coming. 
incredible timing there with Tyrion getting picked off. Rema, of course, Rimmer, my bad. Sadly falling victim to that pick, but it's not much you could have done there as the Hawker just came in at the prime opportunity and landed the drag. And Method presents an opportunity, finds it, and they look for more. They get a drag on top of Alex Aproji, and Alex definitely didn't see that one coming. Yeah, uh, Kena just going in and going crazy again. Ethereum has highlighted several times how strong Arcana is on the Haka, and we could witness that throughout 2018. And he is just delivering again, drag after another, gets connected, and he's able to help them now with a second kill, and that of course also sets them ahead in the Immortal Race. The Immortal Race coming out of the it's wire close here, though. Method, dropping even a Pulse Bomb as well, looking to win this. Who gets it? Crosby and crew are be able to honest? get some damage on it, but Method wins. Yeah, but barely. If that barely. last orb would have hit by Crosby, that would have been even closer. So uh, 800 points on the shield, that is not a whole lot. So a very, very close call there as Method secures the forest immortal for themselves. Charge Blast doing work there, but not enough. Method has the bottom lane pushing in, but they have elected to offset the map. They'll push in top lane. They're working on turrets, attempting to get more experience out of this, and they also have Tracer set up. Now, Tracer did use the Pulse Bomb on the Immortal, but she has one being built up and should have it relatively soon. Yeah, so down here, the Immortal is not going to get too much. Arcana says hi, not much more. Wall has fallen up at the top. Entire level lead for Method. So they are focusing on the towers now. They're not trying to get fought early on, but with both walls now fallen, that is a serious experience lead for them. And it's also, of course, the fountains attacked or at least exposed. And Method was looking to get maybe a kill in the rotation, but there was nobody rotating up, and Tracer was already the first one to be seen. So no opportunity for a kill here, but in general, two kill leads for Method. Yeah, Method seems anxious to fight. And as I say that, Bro Charge comes in into an impale, and Make, done, gone. No I longer on the field. Really, really love how Method is currently posturing aggressively forward. They're curving around the map. It's great to see. We've seen similar things by Dignitas in the previous series, but that only happened when they realized that they were in trouble. So right now, Method is aggressively posturing forward and is trying to find these kills and rotations. And they do it again as Genji of all heroes. So very well done here. And from several sites as well. They get the first stun in, they immediately follow up with the root, and Tracer comes in and confirms the kill. So great play by Method. And a 3-0 as they are starting to get the level 10 talents. And they're going to get the level 10 here. Working on the well, too. Will they get it? Maka goes in, trying to punish with a small window that he has before that 10 hits for Method as Arcaner is soaking in the bottom lane. And there she blows. Method gets level 10. A three-quarter level, half a level behind Trick Esports is as they are looking to poke where they can. Yeah, Shrimpy just having fun on the hero now. Bot lane, Arthur still going up against the Haka. The level 10 is in. Nothing out of the ordinary, but the Cocoon plays, of course, now the big option that we have for Method. Trick should have, around the Immortal time, their own level 10 available to them so that they can at least fight for the Immortal and for the objective. But if they lose out on this one, then all of a sudden things will become so much more difficult for them because they are already a fair share of experience behind their opponent and they would lose out on a fort for sure if they lose the Immortal. Immortals have spawned. Trick is set up on their side for defense. Right. Genji gets 10 on the top lane, and there it goes. Method, however, has a pretty big push on the bottom side moving in. Two, yeah, actually. Arthas has to defend that. Yeah, they have oh, two yeah. camps that they have there. So Arthas needs to defend the first camp, and then basically has to stay at the bot lane to defend the second. So that's perfect timing on Method's side, and really makes it difficult. And Arthas is rotating in because Method makes an aggressive move for the Immortal. And that means with Arthas moving away, the pressure on the bot lane has now intensified. And as they now rotate two heroes down, Method is trying to get the kill. They're moving in. They're actually starting to push with this a bit. Icebound Fortitude had to be used. So that's a big cooldown down for Alex Aproji. Method sees that three are down here defending, so they skirt back to the top. Yeah, they're going to get half my attempt to out of this. But they're at least going to get very, very close to it. They're just faster right now than Trick Esport by a second or two each time. But it's gotten them kills, and it's gotten them an immortal. Well, it's not quite at the halftime show, but it's getting close. Trick is chasing down. Method as they're looking for a fight. Yeah, bottom, there's still a few of the minions around from the camp previously, so that's going to put more pressure onto the fort. Howling Blast, it's home. Ethero needs to be careful, but the roots are on the ground, securing his retreat. Constant poke here and there. That immortal needs a little bit more damage. A grenade or two should be in enough. Trick, you have anything can to defend. Dahaka decides, okay, well, if you want to dance around here in the middle, let's dance. He goes to the bottom lane instead. 
and starts to push in the fort. Yeah, and the Howling Blast misses, so Trick can't capitalize on it. They're trying to push forward, but as you said, the Harker gets the value at the bot lane. That's not only extra experience, that's also structure pressure. Here comes Arthurs with his ult, and the Harker is immediately back to business. The Thero gets cleansed. This time, the ult of Tracer does not connect, and we have Genji moving in. Maka trying to get the damage. Not enough isolation already on Alex. Trick using a lot of cooldowns here, and Method has nearly all of their ults still available to them. They only used two in the last fight. Ancestral and only defensive tools are available to Trick, nothing else. Odin is about to expire. The Pulse Bomb to get used to Twilight Dream only here for Method. So Trick Esport looking to move in for a fight as that Odin does expire finally oh. here. Get a nice pop in. Big Arcaner hit. on the side though. Yeah. Big hit also against uh, against Shrimpy, but he lost half his hit points, but he's already back to business. And Arcana, as you said, he pushed the bot lane out even further. And they are very far ahead. I mean, just look at the immortal damage here. It's just method poking away. Trick thinking about, okay, do we fully just commit here? Krav is getting low on mana, and they can't really sustain too much of a fight. They decide to go ahead. They give it up. And they start are, the race here. They yeah. have to. They're trying to race. They're trying to say, okay, listen, guys, we need to make sure that they are getting a little shield out of this as possible. So they basically give it up. But there's a massive wave at the top that has actually been lost. Arcana never really made the rotation up to the top. There was a double or even triple wave that we saw there build up. So the Haka is finally appearing to the top lane and soaks the remainder of it and catches the next one that pushes in. And that's a fair chunk of experience here. But uh, the most that they will get out of this is probably the fort at the bottom. And that experience will get them closer to 13 as Method has a pretty substantial lead and are looking for that fort, as you mentioned. Getting this fort and this wave should give them that 13 we're talking about. So Onyx and Proji steps forward to try and stop them from fighting. And they go ahead and go for an engage. Frozen Tempest pops. Onyx and Proji kites back, trying to create some space for his team as they deal with the Immortal. Yeah, the Immortal should deliver the fort and the Haka is still at the top. But that 13 is going to be huge. Tiger is immediately popping Odin again. The timing works out for them. Should be back before the next Immortal spawns, obviously. So they can use that easily for another big fight. An attempt to save Arthas. Rhaegar is down already, and that's a problem. Method is trying to go for the next kill. Malfurion is exposed, and Alex wants him, but he doesn't get the kill. And now he himself is in trouble and will fall. Double kill for Method, fighting with a talent advantage over Trick Esports. Unfortunate moment there for Rhaegar. Rhaegar was actually in a position to come around and save his teammate, but the isolation from Dahaka as he sharked around was able to prevent him from getting the heals off, and also seeing that Tracer had jumped straight onto his face, took him out there with a kill, and with no healer being available, Tyrael, Arthas, a little bit too far forward. Eventually, Arthas falls, and Method is able to get a four and a couple of kills out of exchange. It's a two-level lead for Method. Five kills against zero. And again, keep in mind, if Trick wants to have a chance to go to the Western Clash, they need to win this series with a 3-0. Of course, even if they lose, every map matters for the mid-season brawl already, for part two of phase one. But if you want to go to these offline events, and Trick has proclaimed several times, hey, we want to be at the offline Z1 events. We want to be at the Western Clash. We want to be at the mid-season draw. And if you want to go to the Western Clash, you have to win this series with a 3-0 because Zealots turn up the heat earlier today against Dignitas. Trick Sports will have to realize soon, hey, one of their main ways to get into this game is they have to get those resets. That's the best part about their composition. If a Howling Blast lands, Leeming lands a combo, and Genji moves forward and they get a kill, that's where they'll start running forward. But with a two-level disadvantage, well, almost a talent disadvantage here. 13 is about to hit. They'll be able to be tied on talents. Then at least Tricky Sports can try and force that fight. It's all about team fight momentum from here on out. The 13 is here, and now this is the chance for them to fight over another Immortal on even talents. And they need to get that team fight momentum. If they can get the resets for Genji, for Li Ming, there are opportunities to take these fights, but they have to really step it up now because there's only one level until Method is hitting 16, and that would be a nightmare for Trick since they're still so far behind in XP. They push forward aggressively as Trick looks for the opportunity. They have to be aggressive. Here they know it. Orb comes out, charge strikes as well, and Trick Esport is able to get this uh, close to a halftime show. But here comes Arcaner. Dahaka with the brush hucker moves yeah. in, looks for a drag, misses it. Misses the drag this time, and that's the chance for Trick to maybe make a play now, play around the cooldown. They're putting the pressure on Dehaka. Nice move here, but Dehaka immediately with the burrow. Good job by Arcana, but this fight isn't over. Nice healing totem in the back. Make sure that they have a bit of a retreat path. Good sustain for them and the poke against the Immortal as we're seeing Trick starting to go for the halftime show. And there it is. They have the full lead. They have to be careful though. Top lane is being pushed in by the Merc camps that were grabbed earlier. Yeah, bot lane as well. Yeah, they have both lanes. They may have to commit though to say, you know what, Immortal. We have to win this Immortal now. Yeah. They start poking. The longer this lasts, the, the, the better for Method. Method is playing for time here. 
Ah, K now with an attempt to drag, but Rema, nice move by him, but he finds himself in more trouble than he bargained for. Has to use the sanctification as we see Odin being popped in the backline by Method. They're trying to force the fight here, and immediately the engage. Arthas is already popping Ancestral. gold. Alex is going for it right now. Ancestral already used, but this is Alex falling. No chance for him. Great move by Malfurion as well, dropping the silence, making sure that he can't heal himself up. And that kill against Trick might have sealed the deal for this immortal phase. It might have. Bottom lane gets cleared up. Trick heads on over. 15 seconds till Arthas is back on the field. Quickly, Method is catching up in the uh, mortal exchange that's already happened here as they burn down what they can, getting it down to half. Trick Esports starting to group up and wondering if they can rotate it to the top side and try to win out on this race. Crosby jumps on in with the Maka helping out. Fighting where they can. Shrimpy, however, being here deters them away. Yeah, Maka retreating was definitely the right choice because Shrimpy was already having his eyes set on him. Tyrael gets blown to pieces. They were trying to go in and see if they can maybe win the Immortal after all, and I feel at this point they kind of have to. I think they really have to more or less YOLO in for it because if they don't, they are going to fight against an Immortal and against level 16. I'm not quite sure if they can pull that off. Well, good news, they have a fort, at least half a fort for defense and a keep in the top lane. That's where that lane will be pushing, but it will be difficult. You're right, the talent advantage here, monumental for Method. But there's also two options here. Method can decide to allow the top to push in and then get aggressive on the bottom. That keep's already exposed. At the bottom? Yeah, it's only the Ford. I mean, that would be a, that would be trading keep for Ford. There's no way they can pull it off. And that top might fall before the immortal is even here. I'm really afraid for Trick now. I think there's a really good chance that they're going to lose a keep here. And oh. if they lose heroes, maybe even more. That 16 with a two-level lead is a massive problem. That it is. Tricked. Sets up for defense. Dahaka still has that bush that can come up in the top right corner, and he decides that he wants to come up here. There he goes. Brushhugger in. Alex Proji's low. Twilight Dream does miss. Twilight Dream misses and Odin is already popped early. They're going in. They're trying to go for Alex here once again. Rema bottom with the Sanctification as we see the Dragon Blade coming out. Maka with the attempt, pushing them away from the Immortal. Nice attempt to defend here. They go for the Immortal hit points, but Alex is still zoned out a bit. The fort long gone. The wall at the keep nearly fallen. And Method has used a fair share of cooldowns. They have and tricked. Saves out their keep. The Immortal gets cleared up. Good job, better than expected, to They're be honest. Holding, yeah. With a 16, I was really afraid for them. And uh, to be honest, if the Twilight Dream hits Alex, I think he's toast. Well, luckily, he's still white bread. Hasn't yeah. been toasted at all. He's good to go. Maybe he'll get toasted later on as he continues to hold 15 and a half year in experience. Trick Esport, they have some breathing room here. Let's get 16, and it comes down to a fight. I'm a bit surprised that Method is not more aggressive. As Considering how it, yeah, but ah, uh, <laughs> are they still getting it? Okay, there we go. A trick should have taken it immediately, and that could be all right. Nice, nice ancestral here. That was a good job by Grandpa Keta saving him. But yeah, I was surprised that they went for the top camp before they went for the camp down here. But with trick or like, waiting long, trick actually just gave them a present. They took the camp and then they delayed the camp intentionally, and Anubra could simply dive in, and now they can go for the top key. I mean, the dead has to be popped, as Alex wants to survive here. Remember, keeping up with the pressure. There will be a sanctification in 15 seconds. So, a trick if they want to chase, they could, but decide against it, knowing that they're still not 16. But Army of the Dead being down for the next Immortal phase will cost Trick a little bit. Arthas will have to play a little bit more defensively. Yeah, they can wait until someone shows bot and then make the play for the top keep if they really want to. The problem is, if you make that play now, then you have potentially to drop your Odin cooldown, and you don't want to do that with Immortals just being announced. But Trick still holding on to both keeps. That's better than I expected. I thought it would be tricky. Method, I expect them to be slightly more aggressive as they had the 16 talent advantage. So Trick gets another shot of going for an immortal victory here. 16 versus 16 talents, but Trick hasn't even found a single kill yet. Method has seven kills to zero. Trick is set up to find that kill. To the south, they clear up the Merc camps. But Method. Immediately moves over to the Immortal phase. They haven't seen where Trick is. They are being careful, but aggressive. Finally, with Trick showing in the bottom lane, we're going to go ahead and move towards that halftime show, and Trick will be fighting from behind. Yeah, again. And that's not a place where you want to be in this situation. They need to win this Immortal. This is really getting scary for Trick. They need to find a play. They need to find a kill. And as we said before, once they kick their resets into overdrive, they can start taking the entire team maybe even down on Method's side. But so far, they haven't found a single kill in the game yet, and that's a massive problem. They're poking against the objective. 
But now the Haka is at the top, pushes the lanes out. Arcana does a great job hiding there. And this is just putting more macro pressure onto Drift Esports. They need to really flip the switch, and they're trying to. Well, the poke is really paying off so far. That mirror ball coming in for Li Ming is chunking slowly. Dahaka finally makes a commitment to move in. Big Root comes out. There will be a cleanse, but the Pulse Bomb connects, and Genji is taken out. Trick is in a 4v5 scenario. Schwimbi once again diving the back line here for the kill, and they're going in for more. Arcana trying to get a drag here. Let's see if he can get it. He's looking for Emma, and he connects, but there's no follow-up. Drags him into the root. Sanctification even used. And that's another big cooldown burned as we are seeing Method going straight for the Immortal, winning another one. And this one has even more shields than the ones before. This is bad news. Both of the keeps are extremely low on Tricked side and Method is already on level 19. And Method also has Odin available. Is there any way for Trick to hold this? They have to get a fight soon, right? I, I don't think so. I don't think they can hold this. If they can get a kill, maybe. Like, if somehow they are able to go in for a kill. The problem is they have Sanct used. It's still on 65 seconds. And we also don't have army ready for Arthur. So there's no sustain on both ends. I'm not sure how they can take this. Maybe somehow Li Ming getting a good combo off and getting a quick kill. They can turn this around, but it's going to be rough. Well, they're doing what they can against the Immortal. Make dodges out in the isolation that would have came out. Odin popped a little bit on the early side, but Nick is able to push on in. Arthas taking a beating in the front line, but the Sessor Healing will keep him alive yeah. for now. Rimmer also taking some damage. Swippy moves in, gets the pulse bomb, and Tyrael has fallen. And gets the kill. The method the trick has to hope for a misplay here, but I just don't see it happening. Tyrael is already dead. The keep is down, and here with the cocoon, another kill is being prepared. The kill against Rhaegar makes it a double as they are with level 20, and Storm Talons moving towards the core. And Team Method is moving in and buries the dreams of Trick Esports who are going to the Western Clash, ruins them, and they are going to be successful in game number one on Battlefield of Eternity. Method, the gatekeepers, will keep Trick Esports out of the Western Clash, continuing to show the hot streak they